Hi guys. So we're going to wrap up our fractions tutorials by doing some addition and subtraction because actually they're a little bit more difficult than multiplying and dividing, uh, which is odd because it's usually the easier of the operations. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we've got 4 fifteenths plus 5 ninths. And again, you need to find a common denominator in order to do this process. Now the quickest way to get through this is, again, just to multiply each denominator by each other. But it could make your reducing process a really big pain in the butt. So we're going to try to do this a little bit more sophisticatedly. Um, and that's probably a made-up word. I don't really care. So um, what I like to do is I actually start with the larger of the denominators. And I just start listing out its multiples. So 15, and then it would go to 30. That would be 15 times 2, because I know 15 would fit into 30. And then from there, it would go up to 45. And there, then from there, it would go to 60. So now I want you to see if the smaller of the denominators might fit into any of those values. 9 will not go into 30, so that's not going to be an option. But 9 will fit into 45. So how many times will 9 go into 45? And that's going to be 5. 9 times 5 is 45. So using that information, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our common denominators. Now, I'm just rewriting these right now. Nothing tricky. And I'm going to go ahead and get this process started. Now, the first fraction, okay, we need to get 15 into 45. Well, how many times did we have to multiply 15 to get to 45? And if you use this little list over here, this is times 1, this is times 2, this is times 3. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction, top and bottom, by 3. Now the next one, I know that 9 times 5 is going to give me that 45, so I'm going to multiply both of these by 5. So we're going to go through this process. We're going to go ahead and uh, grab our new fraction. So 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 15 we know is 45. The plus stays the same. Uh, 5 and 5 gives us 25. And 9 times 5 also gives us, oops, that is not a 4, uh, gives us 45. So now that we have common denominators, we're just going to add the numerators together and leave the denominator alone. So that's always going to stay there. So 12 and 25 is going to give us 37. And now we need to see if this can be reduced. Now, if you know your prime numbers, you will know that 37 is actually a prime number, and it will not be able to be reduced. So this is actually our final answer. So let's take a look at our next one. Now we are still finding the sum and reducing them. So here we've got two mixed numbers. Now you can do this um, by setting them up vertically and doing it that way. Um, I definitely prefer to make, put them into uh, improper fractions and then just go from there. I find it to be a lot easier. It's way more efficient and that is actually a skill that you will need in the future in your other math classes. So to start, we are going to convert these fractions into improper fractions. So again, bottom times the whole number added to the top. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, so that's going to become 7 halves. And then this one, we're going to do 4 times 2, which is 8, and 8 plus 3, which is 11, so that's going to give us 11 fourths. So now we just need to go into the process of finding a common denominator. Now, if you use the technique that I showed you in the previous example, I would start with my larger denominator, which is the 4, and start listing out its multiples. But in this case, that's not necessary because I know that 2 will already fit into 4. I know that it will fit in there twice. So that actually takes some of the pain and suffering away here. So that means all I need to do is multiply this first fraction by 2, top and bottom, and this one, the 11 fourths, doesn't need to be multiplied by anything because we'll already have the common denominator afterwards. So we're going to do 2 times 7. That's going to give us 14. And 2 times 2, which gives us 4. And then we're just going to bring down that other fraction. And there we go. We have common denominators. So again, we're going to add the numerators together. That's going to give us 25. And our denominator stays the same. And any common factors between 25 and 4, I can't think of any. 
and that means that this would be my final answer. So of course you can go through the process of turning this into a mixed number if you so desire, um, but we're not going to do that here. We're going to do one more. So in this example we're going to do some subtraction, but the process is actually identical to addition. So again, we need to find a common denominator. Now both of these are pretty wonky, but I'm going to still start with the larger of the two and list out its multiples. I know that 15 will not fit into 18, so I have to do this. Now 18 times 1 would just be the 18, so that's times 1, times 2 would give me 36. So let's see, would 15 possibly be able to fit into 36? I don't think so, and sure enough it can't. Um, times 3 would give us 54, and 15 does not fit into 54, so we're going to have to keep on going. 18 times 4 is 72, which also does not work. Times 5 gives us 90, and 90 actually does work. So this is going to be my common denominator. So I'm going to go back up to the top here and figure out what I have to multiply each fraction by in order to get that common denominator. Now the first fraction we know that we need to be multiplying these by 5, okay, uh, because of the process that we just did. The next one, 15 times what will give us 90? And the answer there is 6. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom over here by 6. So now that we have everything ready to go, we're going to go ahead and write our new fractions. So 5 times 7 is 35, and 5 times 18 is 90. We're going to put down the subtraction sign. 4 and 6 is 24, and then 90 again. So there's our common denominator. And the reason why we're doing um, this process right here is to help make our reducing op um, process a lot easier. Uh, if you don't do that process, it's going to, sometimes it really can take you a very long period of time to reduce that fraction. Whereas right here, if we do it initially to start that process off a little bit better, it will make the reducing part a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and subtract. Um, we're just going to subtract the numerators. So 35 minus 24 is going to be 11. And then our denominator, again, stays the same. So if we take a look at this, I actually know that 11 is a prime number, and I also know that 11 will not fit into 90. So this would be our final answer. That will complete this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching.